What's going on, everyone? It's your boys back again with another episode of Power Rangers Academia. Now, this time is only your boy Ooch and the homie JD uh, to here here to talk to you guys about King Oja, right? So, yes, sir. we did a video uh, talking a little bit about it. I think it was be it it was leading into the season just starting, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess this episode that we're going to do here for you guys, for any, any of the Tokusatsu fans that might be, uh, you know, paying attention to any of the videos and content that we're putting out here on Power Jack Academia, we obviously like to share some love towards, you know, where this all comes from, you know, the, the Japanese side of things. So with King Oger being the latest season um, in Japan, it's been out for around at the time of this recording nine episodes nine episodes plus a side special which i've seen as well and i know i know you're only you're only behind by like one episode but realistically yeah, yeah like realistically so which one is the side special again i just want to make the, sure the side special is about uh rackles i, I don't know rackless yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i said rackles rackless i don't know if i saw that special yeah, so so there's so I don't know how many episodes the special is gonna be, but that actually explains how uh he gets a certain Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. So yeah, because okay, I don't want to spoil too much. That. But pretty so much th did this come out already? Or? It's out, yeah, no, I saw it. It's like and oh, it's short. It. It's not like it's not like a full length, it's like like nine minutes or something like that. Alright, I gotta see if I can find this. Oh, I see it. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. So basically, right. um, so the point of this video, and I think we'll do a couple more follow-ups. Maybe we'll do this like every 10 or something. Yeah, because so, yeah, it's almost 10 episodes, so we could probably do it like 10, 10, 10. Whatever. Yeah. So just to give you guys like where we're at mentally with this series, like our impressions and, you know, our overall thoughts on it and, you know, just anything in general. Um, so yeah, go ahead, JD. Tell us uh, what or how do, you, how, do, how, do you, how do you feel about King Oja so far? All right. So like... Um, First things first, I'm a huge fan of it so far. Like, nice. I'm good. actually kind of surprised by how much I'm enjoying it. Um, so just for context, like I got into Sentai, like to, to watching the Sentai actively around Ryu Soldier, ironically. Oh. And I, like, I went back, like I, I think the first one I ever watched was Die Ranger. But wow. um, the, first, the first one I watched as it aired was Ryu Soldier and I've been following it since then. Um, last season, Don Brothers. I know you're not a fan of. I know Isaac's not a fan of it. <laughs> I was a huge fan of Don Brothers. I think Don, I thought Don Brothers was like a tough act to follow. I was like, whatever follows this is is gonna have a hard time because it was so unique and different to me. But what um, stands out about King Oger is that it really has been doubling down on having this unique feel to it. Right. Um, I think like so like at first like the. You know the the way that they're shooting this season is completely different than every other season oh, where yeah. it's you know they're using a whole bunch of um cgi <laughs> sets and um you know it's it's it basically every ranger comes from a different kingdom right. so each kingdom has its own vibe and they use the cg sets to kind of set those vibes and at first i was kind of curious like is this gonna feel hokey is it gonna feel fake but while you know you, you kind of stop thinking about it at a certain point you're just you just kind of get into it because the way that they realize each kingdom um feels appropriate the the rangers that cast themselves i feel like are really um growing on me if like the, none of them really were weak but some of the characters like have have shown character traits that have started to stand out um, and just the storyline in general, I think the story is what's really like hooked me where it's like they, they're getting into some stuff like really early on that yeah. I thought would be, would have been stuff that they would have saved for like mid season tw plot twists, you know? So I'm like, where are they going to go from here? Because I have no idea. But it's like it's, it's been fascinating to watch. So like, what, 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 what's, your, what's your thoughts so far? Yeah, no, you, you basically hit a lot of the same notes that I was thinking uh, in my head, like, you know, for for i guess my own context um i start i've been watching sentai since go kaija okay yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I started granted, like of course i've seen it i went back I, oh yeah, I yeah, seen yeah. Go kaija. yeah but I just i just had to put that out when, there for people. yeah when i when i started though that was when it was airing okay mm. like i've been around for for a while like you know i'm not i haven't had the luxury or the time to like say that i like i've seen every power ranger season right 
I have yeah. not seen every Super Sentai season, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot. I know, obviously, this dates all the way back to 1975 when it started with Go Ranger. So there's a lot of older, there's a lot of the older ones, you know, pre Zoo Ranger and even post Zoo Ranger. Like there's a, there's a bunch of gaps that I haven't experienced yet. Um, yeah. at least fully because I've seen like, you know, handful of episodes here, handful of episodes there, or the first episode here of this. Like I've seen the first episode of maybe like, uh, what was it? Bokenger, which is uh, Operation Overdrive. Yeah, Operation, I've yeah. seen like the first episode of, uh, geki ranger which is jungle fury you know right um and then like you know like zoo ranger i only just recently finished last year you know what i'm saying yeah. like and i had because i have the, the the shout factory sets so mm -hmm. you know it's just it's just uh, you know obviously like you said like a little bit of context like you know like i've been a fan of, of, of you know the sentai for a long time and like you said i a hundred percent skipped out on dom brothers <laughs> because that first episode the first impression that i got was not a good one and i'm someone especially now more than ever i feel like that if you don't if i don't click off the first impression like you lost me you know because like you know as someone who manages this channel three other channels a twitch channel and you know i'm currently unemployed life. And, and life, life. right <laughs> yeah like life in general you know there's a lot of things that you know that we we do every day in and day out and so i wasn't gonna devote time to a show that i felt like off the jump it was just not great so i skipped out on it and i skipped I, and the same thing happens for uh common writer i i totally skipped out on revise too and i saw all of saber that was the one that came out mm -hmm. before i think right so yeah i think so so i watched all of saber i enjoyed it for what it was the revise didn't hit Don Brothers didn't hit. I was like, damn, this is crazy. This is the first time ever that I willingly skipped out on the two, like, you know, pillar tokusatsu, whatever, you know? But then King Oger, we started seeing the previous King I'm like, okay, the suits look kind of nice and the vibe is definitely different. I'm way more interested. So it starts off, like you said, like it, like it's very C, it's very heavily CG, which can be like a good and a bad thing depending on who you are disorienting at first yeah. oh absolutely absolutely yeah. it's it, it definitely takes like you got to get used to it i guess in a weird way yeah. and you don't really get used to it it's just like okay like this is just how they're doing it and you know some things look better than others and then there's certain shots where you're just like damn like they couldn't do anything about that like it's just mm -hmm. they're completely in front of a green screen <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you know but when you look past all that and you absorb and understand like the story that they're they're trying to deliver and you understand like how unique it is because again i'm a fan of things that are very unique but like they gotta hit you know like they you know because obviously don brothers is unique in and of itself but it it, it didn't hit with me enough like i thought I, I was like i kept saying to myself like they could have just made this an anime like why why did they do it do this in the way that they did right um but as far as uh king Oger goes I really loved how they they gave me a protagonist that has a completely different motive. Even though it's not too, it's yes. not, you know what I'm saying? It's not too I know far it does, off. Yeah, it's not too far off from like you know your 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 usual typical stuff that you'd probably expect out of you know you know anything else. But it's just like the forefront issue is that the 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 king of that kingdom right where they're from like the called the red rangers because you know like yeah the red rangers kingdom right like the red rangers kingdom okay is is being ruled by a guy who's low-key sus right and if it came down to it he wouldn't hesitate to sacrifice his own people that's the whole point right and so with the main character seeing that and understanding that and realizing like yo you would really sack your own people he then decides to become what he calls a tyrant king so in order to fulfill what's truly justice he's gonna see himself as a villain as a tyrant and he's gonna take over his throne to then deliver true justice but the way he, he the way he acts and the way he goes about it is like it's like it's very theatrical and that yeah. also that's a that's a callback 
to how when he would play with the kids, you know, like the, like the village children or whatever, he would always play the villain so that the kids can be the heroes. And mm -hmm. like, that's like a, like a true testament to his character. And I was like, okay, like, this is really cool. Like, I like yeah, this. That, was, that caught me off guard. Cause like, I, you know, whenever I watch these Sentais, like one of the things I had to learn how to get used to, or like adapt to was the, um, there's a YouTuber, he, he, he refers to him as the crackhead reds where it's just like these, these reds who are like overly eccentric, have these big personalities and kind of have like this plot armor syndrome thing going on. And you know, you have your cool, you, you, you have your Captain Marvelous side of the things where they're just like OD. Yes. Right? But then you have the other side where they get a little too hokey sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I was, you know, I, I always kind of fear them drifting towards the hokey side of things. So when I saw Gira for the first time, who's the, the Red Ranger, right. I was like, I don't know, like, is he gonna be one of those dorks? And he's dorky, but that that angle that you just explained made him a lot more interesting to me because right. i was like oh okay so he like you know he kind of feigns like an edge and it, like and his motivations are like very rooted in something to where it's like you, you could see actively what he's fighting for and it and it puts him in the crosshairs so to where he he's literally a fugitive at at times which is right. like it's interesting you know like mm -hmm. it, it keeps it keeps things going and it's like he's not just this pure goody two-shoes because he is but he's he's at adverse you know he has this adversity with with law and like real like you know political systems and stuff yeah it's kind of telling you know like like it's, it's some interesting meta commentary yeah so like that's what that's what really brings king oger to like this very interesting you know even discussion right now because it's one of the is one of these shows that very early on you get to feel how different and like stand out it, it is apart from you know and everything that came before it and that's very necessary because you know like you said you know obviously you're a fan of don brothers and i know a lot of other people are a fan of don brothers and like you said hard hard act to follow right so if we're gonna take mm -hmm. all of that positivity right and then we're here we are with with king oger it's just like it sounds like it's doing a great job thus far you know nine episodes and a special in mm -hmm. which i briefly mentioned earlier i'm not gonna get into spoilers guys so don't worry about that this is again this is just we're just here talking to you guys about this so that in case you haven't seen it or if you have seen what, what's been out so far to just be like yeah like we're paying attention to it and we really like what we're seeing so far and we're gonna obviously keep uh tuning in to seeing you know how how it plays out because another thing that you pointed out was like you know the pacing is very good so far yeah you know like they're hitting they're hitting things that you you wouldn't really expect until maybe later on you know maybe closer towards halfway through but here we are like not even like a quarter of the way through and they're getting they're they're really getting through stuff and at the time of this video um they've already since revealed and you know japan loves spoiling them, their own stuff you know what i'm saying they've already since magazines. they've already since revealed the sixth ranger it's a white Who's spider fire, by the way huh I, it's first of all it's fire yeah and second of all i'm so like a, a lot of people have been saying this but it has been so long since we've had a six that was not white i'm sorry that is not gold or silver yeah like we've had we've had some extra rangers like we've had a few purple extra rangers like recently but this is the first time who are our like our actual sixth ranger is not gold or silver yeah no that's true like there, there, there's been a lot of seasons over the last several years where like that's been like the i guess the norm you know like the only the the one uh the one that sticks out to me which is actually funny enough it's a show that i never finished i started it but i never finished it was tokyuger they got an orange ranger for their sixth yeah, ranger Tokyuger's orange yeah but then everyone else you know whether they got like a sixth the seventh or whatever it was always like a either it would go between gold or silver every well, yeah, single like, time so because after tokyuger was um q ranger right yeah and they had like th and 13 q, q rangers. rangers has a ton but like their extra ranger was like I don't even know. They had After a gold, that, a silver, yeah, they had a, gold, a, a silver. purple, an orange. Or no, Scorpio was orange, and he was already part but, of the but, default. But it was team. like, did did they? But like, 
because the I know the team was big already, but like, did, was was there like an extra ranger that was gold or silver, or was it a different color? So no, actually, uh, well, no, well, or were they all there at the jump? That's the thing. <laughs> Q Ranger is a very special case, and I don't think they're ever gonna do that again with having like a base roster of like nine like that's unheard yeah. of you never start with that many you you either build up towards that or you just it just doesn't happen right and with mm -hmm. with that they they had like all the main colors that you could think of off the off right. the jump and then like with the extras that they would get like the, the captain ended up becoming a ranger too he was like the purple mm -hmm. one and then the okay. kid there was a kid that ended up joining the team he was like the light blue you know um and then there was like a second red and then uh they had all the colors right they had like silver gold i'm pretty sure they had a gray in there and mm. uh, and then eventually the red ranger red became he white. became white i was yeah, like yeah. <laughs> oh this shit is crazy right so they had they had like every single color on, on lock and that was dope so and speaking of colors that's like another thing that um we uh forgot to mention is that their base starting roster like their five is a color scheme they've never done before yep. it's red blue yellow purple and black with like black. a little hint of orange in there which is kind of mm -hmm. nice and it's very and it's very unique it's not something that we've seen before it's probably going to take a little adjusting uh, on the eye obviously um but you know what, what plays to the uniqueness with, of king Oger is that it's not your typical like oh yeah here's the red ranger i gotta find the other team members or they're all gonna be waiting for me joining in on the fight nah every episode they have straight up done one after another so it takes it takes you five episodes it takes you five episodes to get that the whole team right but it's not really a team they're all kings, they're kings of their kingdoms kings and queens yeah. right yeah that are that are acting within their you know for for their own like motive right right and, and it's like it's about it's about kingdoms coming together not like a team being formed exactly like, yup because like and, and one of the cool things when they introduce every character it's like it's not that you're just getting introduced to the character you're getting introduced to their kingdom right and how yep. the people of that world work which is another reason why like you enjoy it so much because you're, you're 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 getting introduced to a whole lore right you know, like a, a bunch of lore at the same time it's it's, it's crazy yeah so <laughs> excuse me king Oger, man i'm i gotta say i'm impressed like it's not like i'm not gonna like because i always compare you know you know no obviously like no offense but like i always compare to, to gokaiger right because gokaiger to me it's is the like gold standard, it's the pivotal like, like it is the yes it is exactly it is the gold standard right and like gokaiger was just on another level right but i always compare it to that just to see like you know just to, just to see my hype level for it and like even though i'm not like going crazy i'm not screaming after every episode like I am thoroughly enjoying this enough to even want to even do this video in the first place to mm -hmm. like talk about it. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are like kind of like all my thoughts without like going into any spoilers because obviously like spoiler territory would uh, would would make for you know more a longer discussion. I mean, I guess the only other thing I could uh, think about mentioning is like the Zord itself. Um, that's kind of like the big thing that they've been emphasizing a lot, and I feel like yeah. they haven't really done that. Um, I feel like since Zoo Ranger, I could be totally wrong, but that's probably just because like that's like one of the more recent ones that I've seen where like the Zords played the like Zord a big a story, role. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I like that. I, I think that, you know, because I think that when you have all of the tropes, uh, obviously a part of a season and then like certain ones feel like they're not as important as others. I think when you have everything matter, I think that just makes the show overall way better and way more enjoyable at that point. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'll definitely, I'll definitely say if you haven't seen King Oja already, please go and do so. It is definitely Dude. worth it. Um, and if you have seen it, let us know your thoughts in the comments. So JD, what do you, what, you have any other things you want to mention about uh, King Oja? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna ask you like, mm. you know, uh, out, just out of the cast, like out of the the the, the main cast like we were talking about this a little bit but oh yeah yeah i feel like you you and i have the same standouts so i was curious like 
you know, the, like I want to hear you say your standouts and your standouts are my standouts. So you, you're going to be speaking. I, I'm pretty sure you're going to have similar thoughts. Yeah. So, so as far as my standouts, right? Cause obviously Gira, he's the, you know, he, they're yeah. treating, they're treating this as like he is the main character you know like if you were to look at this like as like an anime or something gear is like the the lead with where everyone is like you know the side or like the sub however you want to word it um but as far as like the the personalities and like you know i want to know more about them um i gotta say that the the blue ranger it was kind of it was really cool and like and mm -hmm. and this is like in no particular order because i'd have to think about this more but like like my favorites above gira are blue black purple and then yellow and then it's gira right mm -hmm. um the reason why i like blue like he's the first one that comes to mind is just because like we're now finally back to at least for me because I didn't see Don Brothers, right? I, I'm sorry, but like we're 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 back to a cool blue, you know? Oh well, I, I'll tell you this: this Blue Ranger is probably the coolest Blue Ranger of all the seasons that I've seen since I started watching Sentai. There it is. Because the, the the Blue Ranger in Ryu Soldier, he was all right, but he wasn't cool. Yeah. Uh, um. Kira Major, he was kind of a dork. He was he he was like he pretended like he was cool, but he was a dork. Oh right, uh, yes, yes, that's true. Um, Zenkaiger, stupid. Uh, Don Brothers, he was he was the weakest link of that cast. But yes, he so by far he's already like up there. Yeah, yeah. So I like he, he's a beast. His his presence, yo. His, even with the stupid pompadour. <laughs> yeah, like, like he, he's still he's still cool. I like his yeah. look and I like his kingdom being very like mm -hmm. technological, technologically based and whatnot. Um yeah. and like he just he seems like he like you know, he's a cool character and I feel like he knows that, but like he doesn't like he doesn't flaunt it either you know like he's just like mm. the right amount of cool so that's like why he's like he's up there for me the black ranger i find hilarious i love this guy <laughs> but the thing that annoys me about him is that he's been playing like both sides a lot yeah yeah and that's like kind of annoying but like he always makes me laugh anyway so i'm just like okay like i'm not gonna completely knock knock him so uh so yeah so like that that's that one so but then the purple ranger right now this character i'm saying the blue ranger's cool yo this this character nah they got it like they they they, they easily like mm -hmm. like they are they are that one anime character that you know is broken and they're just yeah. like holding back or they you know and they play by the rules you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they're there to mediate for the majority of the things. Obviously not gonna spoil nothing. But um yeah, and I, I like I like the design. You know, they have like that freaking uh it's not, it's not even a hoodie. It's like remember, remember what like yeah, Sasuke yeah, and Shino like that, like used that, to yeah, it's like it's a that, um, it's like a face mask jump, but not a mask. Yeah. Like, you know, it comes out from the shirt, or whatever. But they they're very cool. Um and it seems like there's a lot more to explore with that character as well um and then uh yellow ranger is just like she's she's not even she I, the one thing i pr appreciate yellow is she's not a ditzy character yeah she's just yeah she she's just she's just you know very full of how you know she's a she's a queen and anything she wants she gets that's just what she says and she's like oh, i want that right and everyone like you know obeys her because she's the queen everyone does what you know whatever she wants she's the queen but like it's not like it doesn't she doesn't overdo it which is really cool mm -hmm. you know yeah. and everything she's doing is for the people right it's like she she's she's spoiled but she's not heartless which is kind of the yeah that's the point the core yeah yeah that and that i think that's actually a part of the theme of this series is that right all five of the main characters like of all the kings and queens of the of their kingdoms they have some like they have a level of compassion and that they're doing everything for their people except for rackless yeah you know he's the guy he's the sleaze ball 
he's the dude that's like you know he has that look to him where he's like very like he looks very royal but and, and he acts he has a front he acts in fr like like he will do anything for this for, but if th something th goes wrong he'll sack them in a harby he won't even think about it and that's the yeah. difference and they all know that and then they're all trying to strategically play around that but they're using gira as a means to possibly like you know help gira attain his goal so that way all five of the kingdoms can like be on the same page so like there's a lot of dynamics yep. that are involved and that's what makes this like a really good show because it's not your typical you know sunday morning or whatever time in japan where it airs like you know television sh series for kids where it's just like yeah it's like you know it's three or it's five colorful heroes and they're just they're fighting the putties or the monster of the week the exords and boom bam and we'll see you next week like it's not like that at all it's like it's it, it's way more and it it's not you know it's not it's not similar it's like very different in all the right ways and not to mention we've totally forgot to bring this even up because like there's so many there's so many other interesting things to talk about it's like the actual villain like the actual main the bad guy yeah the bugner rock yo this dude is like like no one like like he's there right he's there but nobody cares yet like he hasn't yeah. made his move <laughs> it's like because Rat rackley's is, is kind of the main antagonist even though the bugner rock are there right you know how these shows progress it's like you know they're just gonna they're just cooking at this point right but i'm curious to see how it's gonna fold over whether rackley's is gonna have a, a change of heart eventually which could happen but is he gonna you know or he you know maybe he gets kicked out of the kingdom at some point and then ends up joining the bug Narak and becomes their like human because you know how sometimes the villains will have like a a human person on their team you know, so I'm like, yes. you know, they, they could, they, there's a bunch of different ways, you know, directions they could go with it. Yeah, that's so true. I'm, I'm, but I'm just hoping that it's one of those things where the villain, like the Bugnarok aren't just like a plot device. Oh, true. And yeah. they, 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 uh, you know, cause I, I could, I could easily see them just, just being there just to be the monster of the week. And then they cause something cataclysmic at the end and, you know they have no story you know yeah like i i actually really do appreciate and i love the fact that like the the focus right now is on this rackless stuff and like yeah. the five and the, and the four other kingdoms and like there's all that drama you know like like the ins and the outs and the and the 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 double crosses and all that kind of stuff like i love how that's that comes first before all of this bug in the rock stuff because mm -hmm. honestly they're there to simply provide those fights you know yep. that's what they're there for and you know they come in and they're trying to you know because literally it's like that's all of the drama is happening whilst the bugnarok is clearly trying to take over whatever they can manage to take over so whenever you know a bugnarok you know surfaces that's when you know they gotta you know come together or if it's like gira and somebody or you know because it like again when you're first starting off you're not getting the whole team you're only getting like one to two to three to four ranges at a time yeah you know yeah and that and i like that kind of a build that makes it again it's way i feel like it's 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 very interesting it's very different and like this is kind of how i feel like they're gonna have to treat future sentai series in the in, you know when when their time comes and i'm not saying like they gotta follow the same blueprint but they have to bring those layers of uniqueness to keep people interested, you know, especially, I mean, fans like us, I mean, they, they don't care. We're, we're overseas watching this. Like they, 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 we're not the target audience, but like it's, yeah, it's, not, it's yeah. still hitting either way. So, mm -hmm. and I, I'm like, before we go, I'm just going to say Don brothers did this too <laughs> in, in, in a different way, but they did, you know, and, but, but it's like the, the in terms of how they they play with the the traditional team dynamic in a way where it keeps you on your toes and it's not just you you know like the, they kind of break away from that traditional formula like I, I feel I truly feel like the last traditional Sentai that we've had was um, Kira Major 
Okay, I can see that. And they had um, a Silver like, Ranger. Like, that uh, out of the most recent, it's like Ryu Soldier, Kira Major, very traditional. Everything since then has been different for better or worse. And it's like, you know, obviously, like, you know, there's there's some uh uh with Zen Kaijer, there was a bit of the, you know, it was definitely a weird one, but oh. that was supposed to be an anniversary season. Didn't really hit for me. I watched the whole thing, but I wasn't a huge fan of it. I stopped. Um I gave up yeah, on it, that, like twenty episodes it, in or something. The, like, like the last ten episodes were pretty good, but whatever. It's it wasn't great. Don Brothers I thought was great, but it also was very weird, right? Like I'll I'll fully own up to the, the like Don Brothers is like a is you're, it's gonna hit or miss depending on your sensibilities as a watcher. But I feel like King Oger does a good job of of kind of sticking to some like traditional tenets that you know don't really shake up or like won't div uh, be as divisive mm -hmm. like it's a little bit more it's a, it's a little bit of a easier pill to swallow because right. it has like a you know it's it's an easier premise to get into where it's like it's about kingdoms and uh you know overthrowing unjust people and you you know you have this like ragtag team but the the, the 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 way they continue to shake up the formula is still appropriate of the changes that they've been making in sentai within the last few years mm. but it doesn't sacrifice the story it doesn't sacrifice the characters yet and it's keep it keeps things interesting it keeps you on your toes to where you're you're watching it and you're like yo like this is crazy <laughs> yeah. but i'm also like i have no idea where this is going you like you can't predict it like with uh, with other sentais That's like I, again like and with, with everything like prior to you know zen kaiju or whatever you could be like i kind of know where this is gonna go whereas like now like everything since then for better or worse has been like i have no idea what the heck is happening but in this one i feel like it's much more um it's an easier pill to swallow yeah because like it's just it's a cool it's it's a cooler show just like at the at the end of it it's just cool it's cooler yep yep it's it's and, and you know it, it does what it needs to do it's fun to watch yeah i'm looking forward to episode 10 and yeah, uh, i gotta watch this rackley's thing because like oh yeah you know, i didn't even know that was out like I, I i skimmed past that but i'm about to watch that either later tonight or tomorrow <laughs> uh, okay nice yeah no i i uh i'm definitely like i said i'm, I'm looking forward to episode 10 i'm also definitely looking forward to seeing the debut of their white spider ranger because this yeah, is like the me. first time that they've done a spider and like i've made this joke before saying like i don't understand how they haven't done a spider ranger yet because for those that might not know cool. like oh, yeah, and spider-man spy spider-man Spy like this man how do they not have like that's what i'm saying Yo. like that's what i'm saying so it'll, it'll be interesting to see uh how he morphs how you know like what his zord looks like or whatever and like because usually is he good like like how 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 i, I th that is one thing i miss as like i don't know where they're gonna go with this but i feel like one thing i will say about just sentai and power rangers in general is that i miss the days when the sixth was like op yeah. for a decent amount of time and because now usually it's like the, the six will come in and then just join the team. That's how it feels like it sometimes. Become, yeah, depends yeah, it's on like, the show. Or or and I feel like specifically with Sentai, it's like rather than being broken, they just have this weird personality quirk okay. where they just become some kind of like like oddball. Like they're they're not really cool. They're just weird. <laughs> you know. So it's yeah, like yeah. they kind of just break up the dynamic of the team. But it's like I want them to be like you know at least a little bit on the cooler side i got you yeah but nah, we'll, see. we'll see we'll definitely see so i guess we'll do like another follow-up um yeah, yeah. me you know every five ten episodes something like that you know depending on what you how you guys are feeling um but yeah let us know like you know how often you know if, if, if there's enough of y'all that really the vibe with this you want like these episode <laughs> recap summary then let us know and you know we'll be happy to deliver the content but y'all gotta be interested and so uh make sure yep. you guys are liking the video make sure you're leaving a comment sharing subscribing um you know hitting us up all our twitters and you know all that is gonna be in the description below make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves may the power protect you keep it locked with it right here on this channel stay safe stay clean and stay the hell inside and we'll see y'all next time Sure.